Salutations. Welcome to Strategy and Analysis Centre. Today's briefing, HIMARS and MLRS, a very capable and flexible combination. There has been a great deal of discussion about the HIMARS Multiple Launch Rocket System, MLRS, being used in Ukraine. It has recently been joined by the M270 MLRS. What are these weapons and what firepower can they deliver? Barrages of multiple launch rockets are very useful for broad area suppression, both before your own attack and against the enemy prior to its attack, counter battery work, countering the enemy's guns and howitzers, and for a separate and distinct psychological impact. This briefing will look at two US rocket systems being used by the Ukrainian Army, the M142 HIMARS and the M270 MLRS. See related briefings linked below. Uh, if you could join the briefing, please like the video, it really helps. The M142 HIMARS, High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, is mounted on a standard US Army truck frame. HIMARS can have an armored cabin, as seen here, and as I said, based on a standard US Army truck chassis, which provides good road mobility. It is transportable in a C-130 Hercules aircraft, giving good air mobility can be quickly brought into and out of action and rapidly fire all its six rockets with the crew under armoured protection, as in this example. However, because it is designed to fire its full weapons loadout very quickly, its ammunition resupply requirements are high. Also note the resultant backblast from firing makes it position more obvious than guns and howitzers. As a result, MLRSs when used against peer and near peer adversaries, will often use shoot and scoot tactics. And recently, the M142 HIMARS has been joined by the M270 MLRS. The M270 has been in service since around 1983. It has some armoured protection. It's a tracked vehicle, so has good off-road performance compared to the wheeled M142 HIMARS. It has double the firepower of the HIMARS and can be quickly brought into and out of action and rapidly fire all its 12 rockets with the crew under armour protection. Again, because it is designed to fire its full weapons loadout very quickly, its ammunition resupply requirements are high and effectively double that of the HIMARS. As with the HIMARS, note the resultant backblast from firing makes its position more obvious than guns and howitzers. Depending on how many rockets it fires, potentially more obvious than the HIMARS. Looking at the weapons, it's the rockets and missiles that these systems can fire. Now Ukraine may be utilising the GMLRS, it's the guided MLRS round, which ranges anywhere from 70 plus up to 92 kilometres. Now the GMLRS can have a submunition or a unitary warhead. Ukraine could, however, be using the older MLRS round, which has a range of, range of around 45 kilometres. There is a new version called the ER or Extended Range GMLRS, but as I understand it, it is not yet in operational service. I've included the Army Tactical Missile System, the ATACMS, which I'll refer to as the ATACMS, uh, for completeness. I am not suggesting Ukraine has the ATACMS, and it remains to be seen if Ukraine has the extended range GMLRS rounds. The HIMARS and MLRS are excellent rocket missile systems that together offer a good range of ordnance delivered over good ranges. They offer ease of ammunition resupply due to the commonality of the rocket missile pod, although the quantity of uh, ammunition resupply is high, and good mobility on roads and cross country respectively. If Ukraine is using the older MLRS round with a range of around 45 kilometres, it will be more susceptible to Russian fires. If this is the case, the discussion about Ukraine getting longer range rockets may refer to the GMLRS rounds. If Ukraine is already using the GMLRS, then the longer range rounds being mentioned would likely be the ER, extended range GLMRS. That concludes today's briefing. Uh, a future briefing will examine developments in China's Navy Air Force. Thank you for watching. Uh, 
happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers. Uh, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.